In this video, it's time to give this 2CV some loving because in a week's time, we set off for Croatia via the Netherlands and Normandy. Hubnut, sponsored by Lancaster. So I will shortly um, start the um, engine oil draining while it's still warm after our drive here. I'm gonna do the gearbox oil as well, but I also wanna really go through the suspension. Um, in 2CV suspension terms, these are two key items. Um, you've got um, under here, you have uh, behind the exhaust, that big suspension can. This one's a little bit rusty. And from the suspension can, you've got tie rods, which extend to the axle arms. All very difficult to see under there, but what holds the tie rods to the axle arms are these shackles. And uh, inside the shackle, you have what's called a knife edge. And that sits inside the shackle, like so, and allows for the suspension travel. Very, very simple, very, very effective. But obviously any muck and dirt that gets in there tends to act as a grinding paste and it can really badly wear these. So, you know, I do try and smear grease around. It's not so much for lubrication, more to try and stop dirt getting in. And so I'm gonna pull all those off the, the car and that will give us, um, well, I'll pull these out, the knife edges and that will give us a good indication of how badly worn they are and whether I need to replace them. Uh, so that's gonna be one of the jobs. You can turn the tie rods to just the length, that's the threaded part in there. So, so if you extend the bar, you lower the car effectively because the axle moves forward and um, down goes the car. Remarkably um, complex system really, um, in fact, Here's some footage I shot earlier um, at the um, NEC, earlier in the year, which shows how all this works. Yeah, thanks Paul. So Paul's going to demonstrate how the suspension moves. Here's the spring can. But um, what you might notice is that the can itself moves as well. It's not just the springs. So there's a certain amount of pre-tensioning of the rear suspension when the front goes down. It's a remarkably intricate system. Thanks Paul. Uh, so we've got an individual spring, one, one per axle arm, and the particularly interesting bit is these knife edges. Uh, it's a triangular shape, and you've got um, a circular section in t inside these tie rods. So there's a circle in there, knife edge axe on it, and uh, perfect connection. Very, very simple. Um, lots of talk about rose joints or anything else that could be used. But for the amount of axle travel we've got, this is the simplest solution. Every now and then, you have to take the clips off, push them out, and re-grease them. Um, it, it is a lubrication point. It should be done every thousand miles. Uh, often it isn't. Uh, you have to remove the tension, first of all. I don't know where my gimbal is going. Hold on. There we go. Down you come. So you remove the tension by winding these out. You see this bar? Uh, somewhere along here, there it is. There's a flattened section for you to get a spanner on so you can turn the tie rods and that adjusts the suspension height as well. So the more you screw in, the shorter that gets. It pulls the arm this way, so the arm twists down and the car goes up. So an important part of setting the ride height is um, adjusting these tie rods. And those go all the way through here, through the chassis mounts to attach to the springs. So there we are, I will, I will jack Ellie up, um, take the weight off all the wheels. I'll probably have to adjust the tie rods, so I hope they'll actually come undone, and to re release the tension, which will then allow me to, these are held with little sort of R clip type things uh, on those edges. Um, I can then pull these out and have a look and then assess. And if I need replacements, I have replacements. If I don't, I'll just grease everything up and refit. This has all ended up getting slightly out of hand, um, but I thought while I was in here, I might as well get the wings off, do a proper oil change where you remove the rocker covers um, to empty the oil out of there. And then I thought, well, I might as well check the um, uh, cylinder head torques. That's the only one that moved. Uh, that one moved a fraction of a turn. 
and um, all the others just locked off at the required torque, so that, that's fine. Um, I will now redo the valve clearances because um, there is a bit of a clatter going on with this engine and I wonder if it could be because you know, if the head's been moving a bit it might change the clearances so we'll go through and check all of them and then I'll get on with the suspension work I was originally going to do. Alright, we've got um, one of them off and um, you can see the wear ridge where it's been wearing on the shackle um, this is one of my new shackles and um, fortunately this has been sacrificial this knife edge very very little wear on the shackle itself because obviously if you wear too much on the shackle edge um, you can actually chew your way through it shackle snaps and um, your suspension collapses which most people consider not desirable um, but um, I mean that's not too bad I've had much worse than that but I think given I've got um, new knife edges I might as well put them in and that is the knife edge it's not particularly sharp but all the weight of the car is resting on four of those little spots inside that shackle so there you go very easy and simple way of allowing massive suspension travel a lot of people go why don't you use rose joints but that's just adding complication these cars were never about complication so we shall get the new knife edge fitted that's the rear off on the near side. You can see it's a fair bit larger, but I mean, there's negligible wear on that. So I'll reuse that one. We'll just check the shackle underneath as well. But um, yeah, that one can stay in, I think. Less weight on the back and a bigger knife edge, I uh, presume, because obviously you could be putting quite a big load of stuff in the back. Um, but Still worth doing, it's always good to have a, keep an eye on these. Some people regard them as service items and replace them every five minutes. I'm not one of those. So here we are underneath the 2CV. New knife edge fitted here at the front where the shackle attaches to the axle. Um, and you can see the threaded bar, which I've had to turn a bit to create slack in order to get these out. So like I say, if you shorten those, then the right height goes up. And if you lengthen them, the right height goes down. A uh, bit of rust and on the damper, because everything rusts when you live in Wales. But um, yeah, here's the spring canister underneath. Um, I think I've put that back where it should. So it's kind of time to lower her down and see how she looks. If I can get up without crushing my own cable. Uh, still got all the front off, we've changed the gearbox oil has been replaced, uh, engine oil has also been replaced, new filter, valve clearance is checked, um, they were all a little on the tight side so I've actually freed them up a bit, probably a bit too much, but um, I'd rather have a bit too much and tappy tap it than a bit too tight and burn a valve out, um, so we'll put her back down and see how she goes. Um, in fact, now I've got the gearbox oil plug in, I can start her up right here in the air. Start her up. Oh, that does sound a bit tappy. Maybe I went too loose. Make sure petrol's been drawn through the new fuel filter. Yep, that's all full of fuel. Um, some new pipe is going to have to be ordered up, so I'm not very happy about the state of that. Um, I think it'll be all right. The rest of the section's okay. This will be attached. I had to deattach it in order to fit the filter. Um, so we'll, we'll do that, and um, I'll do that to just raise it up so the filter isn't resting on the chassis. Um, otherwise. Should be good to go. Poor little Took has been sat in here for um, weeks really, but the battery still seems to have some sort of voltage in it. Let's see if um, 
Oh, choke them. Might be necessary. See if there's enough to start her up. Oh dear. Let's try again with an Eddie size jump pack. Well, that all got a bit exciting there. Um, driving along and all of a sudden she's down on one cylinder. That's because she's spat a plug out. And um, yeah, that, that isn't going to get me home because the electrode is now quite mullered. Oh dear. Um, the lead fell on the exhaust as well, so that's all smelling of burning plastic. Oh dear, situation critical. Okay, this is worrying times officially. Um, I can't screw the plug back in very much because the thread on the plug is damaged from where it was dragging on the ground. Um, this has become a serious incident. And um, let's see if I'm able to get any signs of life. I hope she'll start. bit uneven but um, I shall avoid full throttle and see if we can limp back with one very leaky cylinder oh dear I'm starting to worry about the hair now two breakdowns in two days as you'll see in a future road test of a Saab convertible that didn't go well thankfully I think it's mostly downhill on the way back but we shall see no gone again um, incidentally it sounds like this Oh, I've just spent a quarter of an hour trying to refit that, but I cannot get it to bite. The threads got damaged as it came out, and um, it really doesn't want to go back in. I mean, the end's all mangled where it landed on the road. It's in a bit of a state. Um, so rather than it keep spitting it out, I'm just going to have to see if I can limp back um, on one cylinder, at least to the top of the next hill, and then maybe I can coast into town. But, um, yeah... This wasn't how it was meant to go. This was meant to be just a quick run out for Took. First time in ages, but... Come on, Took. You can't even move on one. I should come with a bit of assistance. No 
half of old cars, eh? Oh, no, it's a hill. Oh. Oh, she's not going to do that. Oh, crap. Pardon the French, but it's 3Ds. One of those situations. Have I got any signal here? Barely. Oh, I think I've managed to limp back to the storage. Uh, can't give a more than a hint of throttle. And I'm prepared to jump out. She's jumped to jettison the plug again. I've got to jump out and try and get the plug lead off the hot exhaust before it melts. Altogether, not much fun. Sorry, car behind. We did make it back. I'm exhausted. I managed to wedge the HT lead around other wires, so it was kind of holding the plug sort of in place, and we just about managed to get back, but she spat the plug out again. Um, I don't know if the plug's knackered. I don't know if um, if she's stripped the plug thread in the head. Uh, it's all a bit disappointing, really. Because I'm not going to be able to investigate that until I'm back from Croatia, I don't think. In theory, I could come over next week. I've got the weekend. But Ellie's not running perfectly. She's making some strange noises, so I think I need to do her valve clearances again. I'm starting to worry if the Samson effect is really kicking in. All in all, then, I've not filmed everything today because it's just been a bit farcical to be honest uh, went for a little drive in Tuk and it turned into an absolute disaster um, then um, came back uh, just about managed to get back and um, then I took Ellie on the test drive and she wasn't sounding right so um, I've had the whole front end off again I've reset the valve clearances because I set them incorrectly because I don't know what the hell I was thinking and now strange resonance come from somewhere and I don't know what that is it's really been one of those days one of those two days given that I broke down in a Saab yesterday as well um, but uh, I guess I do ride my luck an awful lot the various adventures so hopefully I'll have a bad run for a few days and then we'll all be set fair you may notice my finest mesh um, I have a sunshade fitted now, uh, giving it a bit of a test because I thought some sort of shade might be a good idea if we're going to Arthur Climbs and Central Europe is currently having to cope with a heat wave. Uh, it's a mere 25 at best here and uh, I'm sweating like a pig. Uh, my unit, oh sorry, my unit is, um, yeah, it's all steel roof, so, uh, or metal roof. So on a hot day, it gets hot. But um, yeah, it's nice to get underway, get some air through. But yeah, Ellie's riding better. So we've greased and um, replaced two of the knife edges, just greased the rears. Uh, we've replaced the gearbox oil. Gearbox change is now sweeter. I think I used the wrong oil last time. I went slightly too thin. So I've gone slightly thicker this time and um, 2050 engine oil, which has made no noticeable difference at all. There we go, let's try and fix that into place properly. But um, yeah, 2050 should be better in really hot conditions. So um, now I'm gonna go home, probably have a very cold shower, and um, yeah, relax for a bit and see what else I'm gonna do with my weekend. But there you go, that was just, um, a seemingly average day in the world of Hubner. One where nothing has really gone all that right. Nonetheless, I cleaned every tool and put it back after use today. New me, new hair, new me. So um, let's see how long I can keep that one up. Anyway, I shall say thank you for watching. Um, store is available, uh, Patreon, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go now. Farewell.
Oh dear. Oh dear. He doesn't happy about something. Oh dear, I've managed to break it. <laughs> <laughs>